Hello and welcome everyone, this is Ms. Carves and this is the fifth of our lectures for the term and this is titled Communication for Academic Purposes. Alright, so for us to better understand uh, which purposes we are actually trying to serve in this particular um, context, let us try to operationalize the term academic communication, right? So, Academic communication, according to learn.org, involves presenting ideas effectively and formally in a scholastic environment. Okay? This is also called scholarly communication, and this refers to the methods of communication that are highly structured and generally only used in pedagogical settings. So if there is one thing common amongst these definitions, it's that Academic communication is the communication we use in scholastic contexts or pedagogical contexts, in short, in school. Okay, so in an academic environment. So if we talk about your academic papers that you submit to your professors, if you talk about your research papers, if you talk about your problem solution essays, all of these papers that you submit in the context of the learning and teaching paradigm, then that is actually academic in nature. So one challenge of students is that they are having a hard time arriving at an academic paper because number one, they don't know how to start, okay? Number two, they don't know what to put into it. So I came up with several um, steps or guidelines on how to arrive at an academic paper, okay? Which are the following. Okay, the first one, you have to select a topic, okay? Whatever topic that is, based, of course, on the prompts that are given by your professors or by your teachers or by your tutors, okay? So if you've got a general topic or a prompt that was given to you by your professors or your teachers, then you have to narrow it down to a particular topic. Selecting a topic for an academic paper is very important. Why? Because this gives your paper the direction, Okay, um, this guides your paper and this actually, you know, um, limits your paper into what should be put into it. Without a topic, you know, everything is just so messy and you don't really know where to start. Okay, secondly, once you have already formulated the topic, you have to formulate a working thesis statement. So when we say thesis statement, this is your main idea. Okay, so what particular main idea do you want to work on focus on that okay because if you don't formulate your thesis statement at the very beginning you don't really know where to focus on that's why a lot of students are having a hard time trying to write or draft the body of their paper because it's not really focused at all okay you don't have a main idea that you want to support you don't have a main idea that you want to elaborate you don't want you don't have a main idea that you want to defend okay so in that case uh, you're really going to, ha to have a hard time. But if you have a main idea, if you have the thesis statement already, and the thesis statement is like a topic sentence that stands on its own, that when you read it, you already have the picture of what this paper is going to be about. So it does not only uh, give you as a writer the, the ease of doing things, it also gives the reader uh, what to expect okay in your paper so it's going to be easy to read on the part of the readers and for you easier to write because you already have your key points in that particular thesis statement okay so again select a topic and then from that topic narrow it down to what do you want to say about the topic okay what you want to say about the topic that's your claim okay and that is actually part of your thesis statement right and then once you've already had uh, once you've already formulated your thesis statement, you've got to prepare your preliminary questions. So what are these? These are the questions that you ask yourself and that readers might probably ask when they would uh, read your paper already. Okay. So in preparing your preliminary questions, you got to try to expect okay, what the readers are thinking about this topic or this thesis statement. And then I have to ask like, um, questions on how to expound on this particular thesis statement like how how do I expound this how do I elaborate this how do I support this okay what are the counter arguments that might be presented uh, and so on and so forth so once you've already set these questions then find sources okay find sources to answer the same questions that you set forth okay so in this case um, 
you have to really document your, your sources okay so every time that you find your sources you try to like organize them into into theme themes and then you try to organize them into the questions that are being answered okay and so as you take down you organize your notes already okay so if you found sources then try to design a system sorry design a system that would work best for you okay i'm not really implementing any you know noting schemes in here but it really depends on like how you do it yourself because um each and every one of us when we study when we find sources we've got our own styles in trying to you know understand or reading in trying to uh I'm trying to sort our sources out so uh it's really up to you how you take down notes and organize your notes okay so once you've already gotten sources and organize your notes and you're now ready to outline your paper okay so you now outline your paper so you've now all you you've got all these made all, all these ideas already uh, you've you've read a lot about your topic and so you're ready now to organize your ideas okay you don't need to put them all in your paper okay that's what the thesis statement is for and that's what the outline is is for you've got to just choose which one works best for your paper and you know outlining is a very important thing to do rather than you know um right jumping right into writing because when you outline you get to see uh where what the flow of your paper is going to be about and you get to really dissect the paper into the different parts so an outline in short serves as your guide and it serves as the skeleton of the paper so it's like a framework of the paper already that you would follow and that you would just put uh, muscles on okay so after you outline of course you draft your paper you're now ready to draft your paper uh, because you already have something to follow okay and then of course after you draft the paper of course, drafting is not like a, a one-time, big-time uh, activity. Okay, drafting can take time, and drafting can mean several rewritings. Okay, and then of course you revise, then you edit. Okay, now once you've revised and edit and edited, you've uh, you have to check for the documentation. Okay, and again, referencing is very important. So in-text citation and um, references page would be very important in any academic paper that you do okay remember that your sources or citing your sources is a mark of you know an intelligent writing and you've just got to cite your sources um, to avoid any copyright issues and to you know just be honest about your work so it's like intellectual honesty being observed and it's for the credibility of the paper as well okay so uh one very uh specific type of an academic paper is a research paper and everybody does that okay um from your uh, senior high school junior high school and of course um college okay tertiary education requires a lot of research papers um whatever your major is whatever your program is there would be a research paper that's going to be assigned so of course um, we all know that a research paper can be quantitative and qualitative and it consists of the following parts of course you have literature review and literature review requires a lot of citation and referencing and you all know that right and then methodology where you get to discuss your methods of course like how are you going to be arriving at the answers and how are you going to be gathering data for it etc etc and then you have findings analysis and recommendations of course in the analysis you've got to cross reference wherein you're also going to use other resources or references or authors that um, justify or provide support for your findings as well and those that are actually are in conflict with it okay so a research paper is bloody but it actually is something that is a thing in the academe is crucial in the academic setting especially for um, teachers and learners alike academic writing at its core okay we have the paragraph okay why because no matter how long a writing is or no matter how long a paper is it all boils down to its nitty gritties which are the paragraphs a good paper banks on good paragraphs that compose it 
Okay? So, let's talk about a good paragraph. Okay? A good paragraph has unity. Okay? It has coherence. It has brevity. And it has emphasis. Okay? So, very, very self-explanatory. I know that since elementary English, your professor has been emphasizing on these things. Okay? That when you write a paragraph, it has to be unified. It has to be coherent. It has to be uh, brief. And it has to be emphasizing something so uh, unity of course um, there has to be unity of ideas and there has to be cohesion okay so cohesion we achieve this through cohesive devices the words that we use in order to link ideas together in order to link or bridge the sentences together in a paragraph okay coherence is more on the the supporting ideas so whether you have a topic sentence and whether this topic sentence is being supported by the rest of the ideas within the paragraph okay brevity uh you have to be concise but precise and emphasis of course you got to have uh, the primary message that you underscore in that particular paragraph so a good paragraph is very necessary and it's crucial okay that you actually write them well okay now you can either write a paragraph uh, in a narrative form, in a descriptive form, in an expository form, or in an argumentative form. So, of course, a narrative paragraph tells a story or tells an event. It tells a series of events and it tells what happened or what happens. Okay? Descriptive paragraph can, you know, detail uh, descriptions of a particular place, person, um, event, idea, or whatever. And sometimes they're mixed together because in a narrative, you can actually um, incorporate a lot of descriptive details, right? An expository paragraph, meanwhile, is meant to inform, to disseminate an information, to explain, okay, a phenomenon or what have you. And expository paragraphs are not meant to be opinionated. So it has to be factual and has to be backed up with ideas right and argumentative of course um, this is where you uh, have a stand and you defend that stand whether you are pro or anti whether you want to change the status quo or not whether you want to propose something or not okay so uh, these are the paragraphs that you can utilize Okay, in order to come up with your academic papers. Okay, now if you may ask whether an academic paper has to have just one okay, among these, well, it can have a mix of these uh, kinds of paragraphs depending on the need of the academic paper. Okay, so let us now discuss academic writing style okay so since we're talking about academic com academic communication we now have to discuss how you serve that purpose of academic communication okay so of course we use the academic writing style and when we say academic writing style i've already made it easier for you to um remember so you just have to remember fish okay like fish fish you just have to remember fish okay so f i s h and that stands for our style for academic writing okay f for formality i for impersonality s for structure and h for hedging okay let us now go through each one of the style okay let's first have formality okay so formality you don't use contractions of course contractions like aren't isn't um, wouldn't okay these are construction contractions okay don't is a contraction so don't use it in an academic paper all right so um, please use the full uh, spellings or full terms or words for these particular um, contractions okay never ever use contractions for academic papers and then don't use colloquial language or slang like for example instead of saying kid you say child instead of saying my old man you say father okay so these are colloquial language that are you know kind of reserved for informal or casual situations okay always write as concisely as you can again brevity okay brevity because people in the academe don't have so much time and reading a lot of academic papers um, especially for example on the part of the teachers can be very uh, can be very taxing write concisely but precisely people in the academy would appreciate that in an academic paper you don't beat around the bush okay so just go straight to the point what are phrasal verbs these are the verbs that are con uh, composed of two or more words so for example get off 
uh, throw away. So instead, you have to use their one word counterpart because that would sound more formal. Like, for example, you don't say uh, look into, you say investigate. Okay, so something like that. Next, avoid common but vague words and phrases. So, for example, you don't say the idea is nice. Okay, you have to clarify what nice means. You have to detail it. You have to be very um, accurate about it. Okay, and then you don't say, for example, you don't say long. You say the size of it. Okay, in an academic writing. Next is avoid overuse of brackets. Don't use exclamation marks or dashes and avoid direct questions and don't use etc. Okay, so um, you see that in an in an informal setting or in, in a casual setting, we use, you know, we overuse the exclamation mark, especially if we want to hint that we are actually excited and we are actually happy. Okay, so that's actually okay if it's a casual conversation, casual text, casual chat. But don't ever use that in an academic paper. Next, uh, always use capital letters appropriately and never use the type of language you syntax in. Okay, I've already mentioned this one. Okay, so capitalization is very important. So you have to capitalize all first you know, words of a sentence and capitalize all the proper nouns. Okay, so there you go. Please read this, okay, the two sentences and please do compare them, okay? First one, if users know how search engines work, they can deal better with them, okay? Second, an understanding of the fundamental operations of the search engine will provide improved user interface, okay? So which one is more formal? Of course, this one, right? This one is more formal compared to this one because this uses formal language, okay? So instead of like this one, which is accusing some some sort, this one is objective in nature rather than subjective, right? Okay, secondly, here, the week-long power outages used up the store's entire stock of batteries. It's actually almost the same thing in here, but the only thing that's different is the word consumed. Okay, so again, as I've already discussed earlier, please avoid the use of phrasal verbs. Okay, so here, used up is a phrasal verb, and in this sentence, it's actually changed into consumed, which sounds a bit more formal. Okay, next, the newly installed system has enabled offices to throw away outdated files. Again, this one is the same thing except for the one word counterpart of the word throw away. So instead of throw away, you say discard, okay, which sounds more formal for that matter. Next, she had to go to work although she wasn't okay yet. And then here, she had to go to work, although she was not okay yet. So what did, what did I say earlier? We have to avoid abbreviations and contractions, okay, like these things, okay? So here, although is spelled fully and was not spelled fully and okay was spelled fully, okay? So I hope these examples, concrete examples, help you understand what we've been talking about, okay? Let's proceed to the next style which is impersonal style okay so an academic writing paper should observe impersonality now how do we observe impersonality we have to generally avoid of course personal language and personal language uses the personal pronouns like i we us you okay so avoid the first and second person point of views of pronouns because it will sound very, very personal. So instead, for example, of saying, I believe that this research is okay, you say it is believed that this research serves its objectives, etc., etc. Okay? Next, never use emotive language because, again, we have to observe him personality because it's going to be more objective if we don't use emotive language. Okay? Next, avoid being too dogmatic. You know, um, don't preach 
do not sound like a nagging ma mother, okay, do not sound accusing, etc., etc. Consistently use evidence from your source reading and reference this correctly. So again, in an academic paper, it's inevitable that you're going to have to find sources and you're going to have to back up your ideas with sources and facts and you have to credit your sources, okay? APA references. Avoid sexist language. So for example, don't say chairman. Um, instead of um, referring to doctor as a he, you can have he or she, or now you can have they as a singular reference. So in the seventh um, edition of APA, surprisingly, you can use they or them as singular. So for example, you can say, um, when a doctor prescribes a medicine, they can inform the patient about it okay so instead of saying he or she or he alone you can say they referring to the doctor to any doctor so they is used as singular already okay and you can actually do that as well okay and then avoid he she himself herself okay i already um told you about that okay let's have some examples so you've got if you don't know how to navigate through an e-commerce site, you will waste a lot of time. Today, a lot of people are having e-commerce because of the pandemic. They've become very resourceful and they're resorting into e-commerce, okay, online business, etc. So um, I thought about this, okay? And then this one is the more formal version of it. Navigating through an e-commerce site can be time consuming for those who may be unfamiliar with the process so you see how much different and how much more formal this is compared to this okay so here we use the personal pronoun you okay you and then we'll waste a lot of time so this sounds very um you know very offending so um changing it into this kind of sentence would mean more objective and would mean less personal or impersonal because you don't really uh, use here personal pronouns. Instead, this is the third person point of view. Okay, let's have some more. The marketplace is growing so fast and pretty soon you think the government would address the unresolved issues surrounding e-commerce now, which are a lot of issues. Okay. And then notice how this is transformed into a more formal structure. The rapid expansion of the marketplace is more than enough reason for the government to immediately address the unresolved issues surrounding e-commerce. Okay, so again, this one uses you and is as if talking to you personally. Okay, and this one is actually, oh, uh, sorry. And this one is now um, more formal because it's not talking to you, rather it's more objective and more uh, divorced of feelings and uh, personality. So we're done with F and I, now we're going to have S or structure, okay? So make sure you write in complete sentences. And you know what that means, okay? Always have a subject and a predicate in your sentence to make it complete, okay? Divide your writing up into paragraphs. And again, paragraphs dictate what kind of paper you're going to produce, whether it's good or bad, okay? Or something in between. Okay, and then, of course, use connecting words and phrases to make your writing explicit and easy to follow. Again, coherence and cohesion. Next, check your grammar and spelling carefully. Of course, um, please practice proofreading every time you are about to submit a paper or you are done with the paper that is very important and then of course use nominalizations and passive so what are nominalizations the nominalizations are um, noun based forms of words later on i'll show you an example and then passives of course we don't focus on the doer instead we focus on the receiver of the action so let's uh, have these examples Okay, the economy did not perform well. The performance of the economy was dismal. Okay, so of course, this one is more formal because it uses the nominalized version of this verb. So did not perform is a verb. And then here, performance is a noun. So we nominalize this verb phrase into just a one word noun. Okay, so this one is performance. This one is perform, performance. So this one with the nominalized version sounds more formal, okay? 
Next, the company can use the cost savings to add value to their product. And this one is an active sentence because the doer is the company. Now, if we transform this into a passive statement, it would be the cost savings can be used to add value to a company's products. And it is um, more formal. And of course, it's in passive form. Okay, so um, always remember a passive uh, construction sounds more formal most of the time. Lastly would be hedging. And hedging is the use of cautious language. So we have to really, you know, provide safety nets for our safety nets for what we are claiming. Because sometimes if we are too extreme about it or, or if we are too sure, if we are committed about what we're saying, then some um, there could be some sort of problems, especially if we're not really sure about it so we use hedging so for example uh use impersonal subjects uh impersonal subjects the, the like what i said earlier as an example you can instead of saying i believe that this research is is correct or is valid then you say it is believed that this research is valid so it it is an impersonal subject for that matter okay next use passive verbs so again, passive verbs are focused on the, on the receiver of the action instead of the doer. So you can just transform any sentence into a passive of construction. Okay. Use verbs such as imagine, suggest, claim, suppose. Okay. Especially if you're not really um, sure about it or it's not an established fact. Okay. Use attitudinal signals such as apparently, arguably, ideally, strangely, unexpectedly. Because using these hedging devices would actually hint your attitude towards your reader. Next, use verbs such as would, could, might, may, because these are the modals that provide the levels of possibility of something. Instead of saying, this is going to happen, you're going to say this might happen or this could happen. And that changes the idea a lot. Okay, so be very be very clear about the idea that you would want to put forward in your writing okay and then use qualifying adverbs such as some several a minority of a few many to avoid making over generalizations let's have some examples of a hedging devices so we have modal nouns these are the possibility of the probability of certainty of this presumption of likelihood of and then um, whatever you want to put in there or the idea that you would like to add in there modal adjectives we have possible probable certain modal auxiliary will would may might can could must should other verbs of course appear assume indicate seem suggest and and the clause that clause plus combination so this indicates that blah 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 these studies suggest that blah 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 it seems probable that blah 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 this would uh, appear to be blah 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 okay so you get the gist right you get the point that you have to uh, hedge your claims you have to hedge your ideas okay in an academic paper lastly okay we have apa citation there are citation guidelines that are provided online that you can check for yourself and you can um, have as your ready reference so this one is a very credible um, guidelines for apa citation online writing purdue that edu so you can just click on this and then um, you're gonna be navigated to their site the same thing that I uh, that I indicated in your assessment task for the module right guys um, this one is a self-study because it's really just you know for your reference okay so please study this all right so that's it uh, I hope that you learned something from this video and please do study the citation guidelines guys Okay, that's very very important and I shall see everyone in the synchronous sessions. Bye. Bye